Good afternoon. After our mostly sunny day, our clouds are going to fill in tonight with light winds. 18 Sioux Falls, 12 in Aberdeen, 19 in Pier, and 20 in Rapid City, where we could see a few light flurries. Then for tomorrow, mostly cloudy skies, light winds again, 36 Sioux Falls, 35 in Aberdeen, 37 in Pier, and 38 in Rapid City. We have a slight warm-up on the way for the weekend. We'll take a closer look coming up. Kelloland's first at four starts right now. Live from Kelloland Media Group, Kelloland News, first at four. Two people are in the hospital following a crash on one of Sioux Falls' busiest roads, what we know so far. Plus, avian influenza is spreading around Iowa, what the state's governor is doing to try to slow the spread. And later, distributing handmade blankets to those in need. A look at uh, one family's efforts for Project Warm Up. Well, good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Tom Hansen. And I'm Kelly Volk. We have an update this afternoon on the search that happened along the James River Wednesday morning. A neighbor who lives nearby tells Kelloland News the team of searchers is gone and the road leading up to the area appears to be back open. Yesterday, crews were using boats and had set up a temporary structure along the banks of the river east of Huron. The search came uh, just two weeks after the 10-year anniversary of the disappearance of Rachel Syriax. The land in Beadle County is an area crews had looked for her in the past. At this point, law enforcement hasn't shared any details on what, if anything, was found in the latest search. Two people are in the hospital following a crash last night on the south side of Sioux Falls. Police say the incident started when a Buick hit a light pole near 69th in Minnesota. Authorities say the Buick then sideswiped another vehicle before crossing into oncoming traffic and hitting an SUV. The 68-year-old driver of the SUV was taken to the hospital with serious injuries, but she is expected to survive. The 54-year-old driver of the Buick was also taken to the hospital with serious injuries. Police say right now there are no charges. Well, three people are behind bars in connection with the stolen vehicle and drug charges. Sioux Falls police say detectives with the Violent Crimes Unit spotted a vehicle that was listed as stolen in a parking lot along Cleveland Avenue. Authorities say there were three people inside the car. One tried to run away while another tried to drive off. Officers say the vehicle hit a building. Police say they found meth and pills inside that vehicle. South Dakotans are reflecting upon the legacy of former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, who died yesterday at the age of 100. Among Kissinger's accomplishments was opening up relations with China, a means of playing the Chinese against our Cold War enemy, the Soviet Union. We spoke with SDSU political science professor about the role Kissinger played in American politics. It was generally agreed at the time that uh, only a Republican administration could do this, that uh, the Democrats and Republicans, liberals and conservatives had been divided uh, for many, many years on whether we should uh, have a engagement with China or not. But Kissinger's actions during the Vietnam War created strong pushback from many who called him a war criminal. We'll uh, look in that part of Kissinger's legacy tonight at 10. U.S. Representative Dusty Johnson introduced legislation to allow states to block state investments from reaching the Chinese Communist Party. Johnson says the bill allows states to remove their money from companies that are linked to the CCP. The legislation is co-sponsored by Republican representatives from Missouri, Virginia, Iowa and Florida. Uh, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem also supports the bill. Well, back here in Kelloland, uh, we had a pretty nice day. Yeah, let's check in with Megan and see what's going on. Well, Tom and Kelly, our temperatures were near normal, but they felt a little bit cool compared to those warmer temperatures we've had. Mostly sunny skies right now in Sioux Falls at 39 degrees, a north wind at 10 miles an hour. We have sunshine in Aberdeen at 38, a west wind at 6. If we take a look at those highest temperatures since midnight, everybody was at or slightly above normal. We hit 39 in Yankton, 36 in Brookings, 38 in Sisseton and in Phillip, and 34 degrees in Custer. We've had a light north wind right throughout the day at 5 to 15 miles an hour and that wind is going to stay light as we head through this evening and into the day tomorrow. We're also watching a few clouds move into western South Dakota. 
Right now, nothing is coming out of those clouds, but we could see a few very light flurries, mainly over the Black Hills as we go through this evening and into tonight. Otherwise, for tonight, clouds fill in. Those winds become light. 18 are low in Sioux Falls, 12 in Aberdeen, 19 in Pier, and 20 in Rapid City, where we could see a few of those flurries. Then for your day tomorrow, we'll keep the cloud cover. We'll keep the winds light out of the southeast, which will help bring slightly warmer temperatures back into the area. But temperatures will remain near normal. 36 Sioux Falls, 35 in Aberdeen, 37 in Pier, and 38 in Rapid City. Coming on Saturday, our temperatures are going to be slightly above normal with partly cloudy skies, a light south breeze, 41 in Sioux Falls, 38 in Aberdeen, 40 in Pier, and 44 in Rapid City. Sunday's temperatures look to be very similar, but we could see a few light snow showers picking up in western South Dakota. We'll take a closer look at the timing of those in just a little bit. Thanks, Megan. Starting today, people in Pierre can fly directly to Minneapolis. Denver Air Connection is providing two round-trip flights each week on Thursdays and Sundays. Denver Air says it hopes to see even more connections in the coming months. Pierre City Commissioner Jamie Huizinga says it's nice to give travelers another option. Another topic of discussion in Pierre surrounds urban chickens. The idea was brought forward Tuesday night during the public comment period at the Pier City Commission meeting. Uh, Paul Giovanetti, who spoke about the issue, listed the uh, other cities in South Dakota that allow urban chickens. He listed the benefits, such as people having fresh eggs, pest control, and organic fertilizer. The topic of urban chickens is one the Pier City Commission considered about 10 years ago. A group called Pier Urban Chicken Reform wanted an ordinance to allow people to have six chickens within city limits, but it did not go through. Since its founding in 2006, Project Warm Up has made and distributed, distributed over 37,000 blankets to adults and children in the Sioux Falls area. The organization is working to add even more blankets this year. Kelloland's Renee Ortiz has a preview of the story she's working on for the next half hour. I'm here at Sonia Sotomayor. Volunteers with Project Warm Up have spent the last week cutting thousands of yards of fabric in the hopes of making 3,000 blankets this Saturday. On Saturday, we will be hosting the biggest blanket party of the year. And so we're here from 11 till 3. And during that time, folks can come and join us to make blankets. We'll have fleece, we'll have scissors on hand and lots of blanket making stations in our gymnasium. Several of these volunteers have been making blankets over the years. You're going to meet some of them in my full report coming up tonight. Reporting in Sioux Falls, Renee Ortiz, Kelloland News. After the break, the store that was the site of George Floyd's murder in Minneapolis is now suing the city and the mayor. Plus, yet another county in Iowa has cases of the bird flu, and it's near Kelloland. We'll tell you where straight ahead. You're watching First at Four on Kelloland News. 